Hey guys, it's Greg. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Siamese network in TensorFlow. Siamese network essentially meaning we have multiple inputs here. Here we have two images. They're both going to pass through the exact same network, so all the same weights, literally the same model, and it's going to output the probability that they're the same type of class. And so we're going to do this for MNIST. These are 28 by 28 images. And at the bottom here, you'll see we have two images. We'll input these both into the model, and it'll output the probability that they're the same class. Hopefully, it'll have a low probability after it's trained, because this is a class 7, this is a class 5, or maybe a 6. It's kind of a weird one. This is very common in, say, facial recognition. You'll want to compute if one image, say someone walked into the office and we took a picture of them, we want to compare that to, say, an existing database picture to prove that they're actually an employee of the company. You'd compare those two images and compute the probability that they're the same person. Although what we'll create isn't exactly that, it has pretty much the same architecture and just the differences where you'd expect them to be, like a more complicated model and so on. Or maybe instead of for images, you could do it for sound clips and you could prove whether one person talking was the same person talking as another one. There's a lot of use cases where you'd want to use the same model to compute, say, similarity between two or multiple different things. If you want to skip to the part where we create the model and not worry about all the other setup, go ahead and look in the timeline of the video or just scroll over to the point where it says starting training the model. Otherwise, I'm going to start from the beginning to show all of the setup to establish the data set. And I think it's important to do that because there is some TensorFlow specific stuff. And if you're using another language, you'd still want to know how to set this type of problem up so that you can train the model correctly. But let's get started. And I'm going to create a new Colab notebook now. So I'm going to start with just getting MNIST, and that's really easy in TensorFlow. Import TensorFlow as TF, and then we can get MNIST is equal to tf.cares.datasets.mnist, and we can load up these NumPy arrays x train and y train with x test and y test is equal to mnist.load the data. That'll automatically download that as well. And we'll just look at the shapes x train.shape, y train.shape xtest.shape and ytest.shape. And so in Xtrain, we have 60,000 28 by 28 images. Each of those are one of 10 different classes. So here in Ytrain, we have the label 0 through 9. And here we have the same things just for 10,000 images and labels in the test. Here I'll jump right into creating the model. So from tensorflow.kiras.layers, I'll import all of them. And then from tensorflow.kiras.models, we'll use both sequential and model. We're going to use the functional API for this. You definitely have to when you're using, say, multiple inputs and putting them through the same network. Now I'm going to create two inputs. We'll do image A input. That's just the first one is the input of 28 by 28. And we'll give that a name as well. Name is equal to, say, the image A input, just to track that. We'll do the same thing. And so I'll just copy that and replace A with B, so that will be image B input, and name is image B input. So now we have both of the inputs to the model. And what we're going to do is just make a function that gets a simple CNN block and use a few of these different blocks. You can really use whatever sort of CNN or model you want here, but I'm going to use a custom one. Get CNN block with the depth, so that's the number of filters in the convolutional layer. We'll return a sequential of we'll do a conv 2d of the depth that many filters we'll make it a three by three and a one by one stride without any padding so it will be down sampling there we'll do a batch normalization layer and we'll do the relu activation as well so we're going to make a cnn out of these blocks we'll just say uh, depth or number of filters as a hyperparameter is say 64 so that we can do our CNN is now a sequential of mostly made up of these blocks. We actually have to do a reshape first to 28 by 28 by one, a convolution expects some amount of depth there. And then we'll get a CNN block with say just depth. And then we'll get one, get CNN block of maybe depth times two. It's pretty common when you lose height and width that you gain it in depth. So we'll increase the depth there. Uh, and then we could just do this say a few more times. We'll get one of these, which is times four for fun. You could do whatever you want here, depth of say times eight. 
and then we're happy with that. That's probably getting it down pretty small as it is. It only started at 28 by 28, and we're losing, I think, two dimensions every time. Uh, so we'll now we'll do a global average pooling 2D over that height and width. So you're left with uh, depth times eight number of nodes here. That will be 64 times eight. I don't actually know what that is. We'll find out. After our global average pooling, we'll do a dense. And so maybe we have 64 nodes here of an activation equal to ReLU. Now normally here what you do is add the probability in here as say a sigmoid, except what we're gonna do instead is stop it here because we're using multiple inputs. And so it's a little bit more complicated. What you have to do is since you have these multiple inputs here and we haven't tied them through this sequential yet, what you should do is get a feature vector for each of these inputs. You put them both through the CNN and get your 64 dimensional feature vector out of them. So we'll say feature vector A is equal to the CNN, that's what we called it here, the CNN of image A input, that's what we had up here. So put image A through the network to get its feature vector, and then we also want to have feature vector B, which is the image B going through the network. Now we're just gonna concatenate these two vectors together because we have the representation for A, we have the representation for B. To join them up in a network, it makes a lot of sense to just do a concatenate where we have then both of the feature vectors all as one 128 dimensional vector, and it has all the information for each stored in there as one part of the network. So we'll do concat is equal to a concatenate of the feature vector A and feature vector B. And we'll close that up. We'd like to teach the network how it can map this concatenated feature vector layer into how it can figure out the probability that these two are the same class. Well, we'd like it to learn some more nonlinearity or complexity here. So we'll do dense is equal to the dense layer of say 64 with activation equal to ReLU. So that adds a little more complexity into it, and we'll add that onto the concat layer. So it joins them up together and turns it into a 64 dimensional ReLU layer. And then from that, we can do the output is equal to the dense of just one with an activation equal to sigmoid. And we give this a sigmoid to make sure it's a probability. And we also have to add of the dense. And there you go. If we do model, is equal to the Kira's model of our inputs. We specify that the inputs are image A inp, that's our image for the first path, and then our image B input, the second path, and then our outputs is just one thing. The outputs is the output, our probability, and we should be able to get a model dot summary from that. Indented too much, if we do shift alt on Windows or command shift on Mac, then you can actually grab the whole column up like this and we'll just back all of these up and run it again. We should see a model dot summary where we have two inputs to the model, the image A path and the image B path. We want to compute the probability that they're of the same class. Hence, we end in just one here, which will be a probability. Along the way, we put them both through the exact same CNN. It actually shows all of that just in this one piece here, and it converts that to a feature vector. So each of these are going to be a 64 dimensional feature vector. It only shows the one, but you actually have both of them. And then it's gonna concatenate both of those 64 into a 128 so that we have all of that information stored in here. And so from here, we just let it learn a little more complexity, turn it into a probability, and that's your model. Now setting up the input for this is actually a little bit tricky, and it took me some difficulty too. If we do import numpy as np, and we'll get this thing random indices is equal to the numpy.random.choice of xtrain.shape sub zero, and then 300, and then replace equals false. I'm gonna explain this very shortly. If we do xtrain sample and ytrain sample equal to xtrain sub, the random indices, and ytrain, sub the random indices. Let's look at the shape of these samples. Xtrain sample dot shape and Ytrain sample dot shape. Watch this. 
So we have 320 by 20 images and 300 in the wide train. So all this did was get a random sample of the 300 images and the 300 labels that match those from the train. So we got random indices, which is a choice in the shape sub zero of X train. That is 60,000, this value is just 60,000, which is saying, get me random numbers between zero and, well, 60,000 minus one are the valid indices, and we want 300 of those, so a sample size of 300, and so that's our output here, and then replace equals false. So don't get the same ones, we want uh, 300 unique ones. And then we just index into those random indices, and then we'll get our shape. So that's nothing more than a random sample. And we use this because the complexity of what we're doing here is going to grow very, very fast. And if you look at, say, length of x train sample squared, then this already is 90,000 different images and label pairs. We're trying to get here pairs of images because that's what our model takes. It takes one image and then it takes another image. Well, if we get any of these images of the 300, we can actually get any of the other images, in fact, including itself, as another member in that pair so that we have a pair of images to put through the model. That's what our training set has to be made up of, pairs of images. So if we have 300, well, we actually have 300 squared. And so that's why these things work very well, is because even if you have a very small subset of data, well, you can get a pretty big data set even with a very small initial data set. So we're going to get that paired data set now and put it into the right format. We'll do import iter tools, and we'll define make paired data set which takes X and Y. So once we'll pass it train and the other time we'll pass it test, we'll use it for both. And we're gonna say our X pairs, which will be pairs of images and Y pairs, which will be the pair of labels for that is starting out to just be empty lists. Then we're gonna get a list of tuples as the list of the tuple X1 and Y1 for x1, y1 in the zip of x and y. Then if we print the length of tuples, if we actually print tuples, it'll be really gross. We're not gonna do that. We will just call this make pair data set. We'll pass it x train and y train, not the sample. Here we can see it's length 60,000. So all this did was take each image and its label and it put that into the tuple of the image and its label. Not too interesting, but it's useful for what we're about to do. So I'll get rid of that print and get rid of that there as well and carry this on. We'll go for T in the iter tools dot product of tuples and tuples. See, that's why it's kind of squared here because it's tuples and tuples here and the product between that. And we'll get pair A and pair B which is equal to the tuple that it prints out. Don't worry if you're not following this. I would not expect you to know exactly what this is producing. I'll just show you the result of it after we write the code. Image A and label A is equal to T sub zero and image B and label B is equal to T sub one. And then we'll make the new label. This is the label that we're actually gonna be using for the pair. This label says whether or not this image is of the same class of this image, or equivalently whether this label is equal to that label, because that's what says what class they are. This is the class of A, this is the class of B. And so if these two labels are equal, that means they're the same class. So our new label is going to be the integer of whether label A is equal to label B. That's what the model really cares about. Now we also need to store the pair of images for that because this is going to be the label for a pair. We need to store the pair and that'll be an x pairs dot append with both image A and image B. So there's our pair of images. This is the corresponding label for that. And then we'll do y pairs dot append. Well, that new label, that's what we just got. Okay, and then after that, we just convert these things to NumPy arrays, and I'll show you their shape. Don't worry if you didn't follow that, it's not really a big deal. X pairs is NumPy.array of X pairs, and Y pairs is equal to the NumPy.array of Y pairs, and then we will return X pairs and Y pairs. So now if we call this thing, we will call make pair dataset on X, X train and y train. Well, this is going to take 
an infinite number of time. Because uh, guess what 60,000 times 60,000 is? 60,000 squared, that's equal to that number. Uh, the computer does not want to store all of these images and labels in RAM. I guarantee you that this would crash on most computers. And so that's why we're going to use a subset. We will instead call this with X train sample, just 300 and Y train sample. And then it's not too bad. So we'll just call this thing twice. And so we'll get X train pairs and Y train pairs is equal to the make paired data set of X train sample and Y train sample. And we'll see X train pairs dot shape and Y train pairs dot shape is going to have, there you go, 90,000. That's that same number we computed for before. This is 300 squared and then two by 28 by 28. This makes sense a lot for passing this to our network. We have a batch or a big number of images and then each of those are actually pairs of images, not just one image. Each of these are a pair of images, which are both 28 by 28. And then we have the label specifying whether or not they are from the same class. Now I'm gonna paste this code in because it's exactly the same as what we did for the train except for test. Here we have random indices is the choice of x test.shape sub zero with just 150. So that will be 150 squared. We'll have 150 squared for the test. That's still 22,500, a big enough number to test. And we don't want to replace that. We'll index both the x test and y test with the random indices so that we get an x test sample and a y test sample. That is not our paired data set yet. We have to make this paired. And so we'll call our make paired data set. Actually, I can just copy this one. And so we'll have x test pairs and y test pairs is to make paired data set of the x test sample and the y test sample and x test pairs dot shape and y test pairs dot shape. And this better look the same as this pairs shape, except instead of 90,000 in the train, we have 22,500 to test. That should be good enough. Training the model is gonna look pretty similar, although there is one very minor difference. We'll do model.compile and the loss is gonna be the binary cross entropy because we are using a sigmoid activation and we have optimizer is equal to a dot optimizers.atom with say a learning rate equal to 0.001 is usually a pretty good start. And we'll just look at accuracy. Of course, that's not the best metric possible, although it is good enough. And actually, since the MNIST data set is balanced, it is actually pretty okay. Uh, we'll do an early stopping. So from tensorflow.kiras.callbacks, we'll import early stopping. This has nothing to do with this particular Siamese network. It's just for model training. We'll do ES is equal to an early stopping with a patience equal to three. And then our model fit might look a little bit confusing, but I promise it makes a lot of sense. Model.fit. Now what it expects here is a list of each of your inputs, and that won't make sense until we see what it is. X is equal to X train pairs sub colon zero colon colon and then the other element is x train pairs colon one colon colon so it's a list of your inputs here these are all your inputs for the first path and these are all your inputs for the second path remember our model took in a image a input and an image b input it expects a list of all of these inputs and all of these inputs because as we said down here, our inputs, our inputs are listed as the list of all of these images and then the list of all of these images. And we need to emulate that down here when we pass it in. The first thing is all of the images in the first path and this is all of the images in the second path because this dimension here, that second dimension, is whether or not it is the image from the first side or the second side. And there's no real difference between the first path and the second path, it's just you need them separated so that you have all of them on one side and then the others on the other side. Then we can set y is equal to simply y train pairs, those are our labels for each of those, and then the validation is gonna look pretty much the same, except it will be for validation. And so here, the validation data, it's gonna be the tuple of 
your x, which is all of your x test pairs on the first side, and then all of your x test pairs on the second side. So that'll go in like that. And that's your first thing in the tuple because this is all of the x stuff. The second part of the tuple is just y train pairs. After we let this run with say a thousand epochs, it won't actually run for that long. That's why we're doing the early stopping. We'll do a batch size of say 32 and callbacks is equal to yes. Changing that to y test pairs, sorry about that. Change runtime type to a GPU and we will just run all of these. And that's how to train the model. I am just going to stop this because it's probably already good enough to sort of use. And I'm just going to do a little bit of visualization in this to show you how it's working. So if we were to grab, say, two random images, image A and image B, you don't have to use the same variables, but I'm just calling it the same thing. And that's going to be, we'll grab X test sub zero. So the first image there and X test sub eight. So maybe the ninth images in the test set. So comparing the first image in the test set to the ninth image in the test set, Let's also grab their labels, label A and label B is equal to Y test 0 and Y test 8. So those are the labels for each of them. We should see label A and label B. What are they? Okay, the first one's a 7 and the second one's a 5. Well, let's just quickly visualize this. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and do a plt.figure with a dpi of 28 and plt.mshow of image A shows us the first one is a seven, and unsurprisingly, the second one will look a little bit like a five. So there you go, the ugly five. When we do model.predict to get an estimate, we actually need to put the list here, because again, it needs the list where the first element is the list of the first images and the second one is the second images, but except here, we're just using one image for each. So it'll be the list of image A, and image B. If we output that, then it's not gonna like it because these things expect batches. It's yelling at you because it doesn't want this to be one image, it wants it to be a batch. We can get around that with dot reshape in one by 28 by 28, and then the same thing with image B. Remember image A and image B are already NumPy arrays, so this is fine, 128 by 28 as well. We output that, and now it's happy. It should output us our probability. And it gives us, well, after we flatten it, because this has a lot of stuff embedded in here, if we flatten that, then we can see 0.05. That is a very, very low probability, as in it thinks the probability that these two things are the same class is very, very low. If we instead change this to, we'll just play around with this index for a moment to try and find uh, the same class. 17 tries, I found another seven. So here, if we plot the first image, it's that same seven. This next one, sorry, I didn't actually update the other index. 17, we run that. And then again, that one, the first one is a seven. The second one is a seven as well. They look a little bit different. And the probability that these two sevens are the same class is not amazing because I didn't let the model train that long, uh, but still it got the right answer. If you wanted to instead transform that probability into a true or false value, so this greater than 0 0.5, we'll threshold it. And this is now the array of true. We'll just actually convert this to sub zero so that we have true. So it thinks that these two things are the same image. And if we let it train for longer, it would do much, much, much better. Okay, that's how to make a Siamese network in TensorFlow. I hope that was very helpful. If you liked it, then please drop a like on the video and have a great day, guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.